What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about Quibi. This is the hottest startup in media landscape right now. It launched today. It has $1.75 billion in funding, just a two-year-old company. They've got shows with Chance the Rapper, LeBron James, Chrissy Teigen. Um, you've probably seen their ads on like every single Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, your website, TV, doesn't matter where you're looking. You're probably getting blasted with ads for this new thing called Quibi. So in this video, I want to break down what is Quibi, this company that seemingly came out of nowhere with ungodly amounts of funding and why I think they are poised to be one of the biggest flops in startup and media history. So Quibi, um, founded just two years ago by a guy called Jeffrey Katzenberg, who uh, originally started DreamWorks Animation, sort of OG legend in the Hollywood uh, studio space. He has this vision to bring Quibi to the market, which is essentially mobile-only video, like literally only videos you can watch on your phone. Every episode's less than 10 minutes, but it's cinematic quality content, like extremely high budget, super, super high budget. Um, and I believe them because they've raised $1.75 billion. Um, they actually have brought in Meg Whitman to be the CEO of the company. She was the CEO of eBay and HP. Honestly, not the biggest fan of her, just kind of an old school CEO on the wrong side of innovation time and time again of the tech industry. So I don't know how she's going to lead this hip media company. I don't know. Um, but here's here's her vision. And I, I downloaded the Quibi app. Um, they have a 90 day free trial, um, but you're supposed to pay either five bucks a month uh, for with ads or eight bucks a month without ads. Um, I just did the five dollar one to see what was happening. Um, I still had to agree that I would start paying in July, which is kind of annoying before even getting into the app. But I use the app. Um, it looks, you know, it's super well built. Um, it moves super intuitive, super smooth. Um, it looks like they have a good amount of content on there. I believe they launched with about 50 shows today. Um, but I just didn't get the use case. Like I, I watched some of the shows, um, was just checking it out. I mean, the quality is really, really good. They also have this, their one, I guess, game changing feature is that you can tilt your phone like this and it'll show you a different perspective of the content. And then you can just uh, tilt it back like this. It's called turn style. And that'll seamlessly switch between different viewings of the content, which is a cool little feature. Um, but I don't know. It's basically just like another, you know, app like Hulu that you could have and watch different shows on. Um, but the other thing that's different about Quibi is that it's not available on like your Apple TV or like your Roku. So you can't actually watch it on the TV. It's only for mobile. Their whole thing and their advertising campaign is like, oh, how long do I have to wait? A Quibi. I'll just watch a Quibi. And so like whenever you're on the go and killing time, you could watch this platform. So, um, you know, they have all this content, monthly subscription service, direct to consumers. They have a ton of investors, like all these, you know, NBC, Comcast, Universal, all these old school big media conglomerates are investing in the company, I think helping them get content. Um, they have all these stars making the content. So why do I think this is gonna fail? Why do I think this is a total flop? First of all, they've raised way too much money um, and they have no product out in the wild. So I think that's always gonna shoot you in the foot. Um, they only have 50 shows. And I think they haven't thought about the use case. Like I downloaded the Quibi and I was playing with it and watching it and I'm just like getting bored. I'm like, I'm on my phone. Like I want something that's quick. Like, I, I don't know. I've, I've been playing around with the TikTok app recently a hundred bazillion times more fun to watch videos on on TikTok when I'm on the go, way more entertaining. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super ADD and I need to like constantly be entertained. I don't want some like long dragged out cinematic shot on my phone. I'm like, okay, like I can't even appreciate this because it's on my phone and I want it to be quick hitting content. So I personally couldn't get it through 30 seconds or a minute of any show because I was too antsy and felt like, why am I watching cinematic content but I have to hold my phone. Like it just didn't make sense. And then I think about, okay, you're launching now. Everybody's not on the go because we're all quarantined at home. So the entire use case of why I would need Quibi is irrelevant. Um, at the same time, you know, they were supposed to launch this at, at the end of 2019. Now it's 2020, already super late. Now they're launching it. Now you have that pressure of you better keep pushing out new amazing content. I think that's what hit Disney with Disney Plus. They put it out. Their, their Star Wars show came out, but then it stopped coming out. They didn't have this slate of epic new content constantly coming out. And then excitement in the platform dwindled. I think Quibi is setting itself to shoot itself in the foot. They've launched now. They put all this hype. Then at the same time, everyone from their company is working from home. Their studios are shooting new content from home. I think this is going to put a huge hiccup in all of their development plans. And so if I had a really tight content schedule where I need to get all this content out, I wouldn't want to launch my app right in the middle of this who knows how long shutdown, saying that's kind of weird timing as well. Um, but just generally, it's like, 
when, when, you know, you literally have an app that has zero traction, but is already pricing in millions of viewers on every single show because you're paying so much money for content on every single show. Like Meg Whitman, the CEO of Quibi has this quote saying like, oh, YouTube is a joke. YouTube's everywhere and it's free, but people are only putting in hundreds of dollars um, invested per minute of content produced. We're putting $100,000 per minute of content produced, boasting about that. I think that's great, but to get a positive ROI on $100,000 produced per minute of content, you need millions and millions of people watching every single episode and you don't have that. So I, you know, I just think a, you're putting so they're probably spending tens of millions per, per quarter on just producing content, huge amount of money to produce that content. Then they're spending an absurd amount of money on advertising. Then you sign up for this service where you pay five bucks a month and they're still showing you ads before literally every single show. I still have to watch an ad, which is annoying because I also am paying for it. So I don't get that. And I can't even watch it on my TV. So it's like, I personally don't like the service and for them to justify all these massive investments they made in content and advertising, they are going to need to hit millions of users ASAP, you know, off the ground. Just this has to be viral. They have to have like three Tiger King, you know, quality uh, level shows to get enough users on this platform to remotely justify this investment. I mean, they have a couple different scenarios where they like they say, oh, our content spend trajectory is going to go like this based on this many users. Um, but I just think there's no way that this app gets remotely the amount of users it needs or engagement to continue producing this quality content. Um, and yeah, and I just think they haven't thought through the use case. Like I th I'm such a believer in like put out an MVP, get it out in the wild, start to see traction before you start to throw all this money at it and you build something for $2 billion that nobody actually wants because you've never put it in the wild. So I don't know, this is kind of a rant, but I've been following Quibi. I'm putting in the HyperChange uh, Patreon newsletter. Um, it's a really interesting story, I think, to follow just because it's like we have all these like <laughs> forgive me, but like boomers creating this, you know, Gen Z media startup spending billions of dollars funded by cable companies who are being irrelevant. And it's like, I just think it's, and, and like some of my friends are like, dude, have you heard about Quibi? It's going to like be so sick. I heard like all these big people are putting money behind it. And I'm like, dude, Quibi is going to flop so, so hard. So I just think it's kind of a funny, interesting case study to follow here. So much money behind it. So many big names. Um, and I personally think it's going to flop. I, I hope I'm wrong because they're a startup, they're innovating, they're trying to, you know, bring new content to people. So I guess I should be rooting for them to win. But deep down, I just think this is going to be such a big flop that I wanted to make a video um, putting my prediction out there and just seeing what y'all think about it. Because I think Quibi is like, I, I laugh every time I hear it. And it's, I, I also think the name's kind of funny, Quibi too. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Quibi actually going to exist? Is this like a Netflix competitor that is going to totally take off and go viral? Or is this like the Zune of, uh, uh, of content streaming services? Services. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers. This is HyperChange. I'll see y'all next time.